you can. Just simply take your long, your short sides and slip and score them like this. And then of course, slip and score the other side and you get a box. But I wanna show you a little bit of a cleaner way because I just got these really fun new tools and they're bevel cutters. So what these do is they cut the edge of your clay at 45 degrees because two 45s make up a 90 for the corner of your box. So you're gonna take your long side, you hold this up against it just like this or this side, they both do the same thing. You hold it against it just like this and then you're going to make sure it's flat on the table and pull it towards you. And you're gonna do that on all the edges. So when it cuts, it's just taking off that little bit to leave that at a 45 degree angle versus um, a 90. So you'll see as I'm cutting, I hold my thumb on the end. This way it doesn't pull as it cuts and keeps it nice and clean. So I'm cutting all my corners. And then once you have them all cut, we're ready to slip and score them together. So I'm gonna take my slip. Put it on. Have I told you guys to bring in a fork? You should totally bring in a fork because it makes scoring go much faster. There's one done. Two. And my fork. Get a good score on there. So I go up and down then at an angle, so it's a like, good crisscross. But I think it makes life easier. Once I have all my sides scored, I'll start to put this together. I'll take my long side and a short side, and then I'm going to press those two together. And as I'm pressing, what am I looking for? Who remembers? Yes, you want that slip to come out of the seam. And then that's how you know it's sealed. And then on the inside, just to make sure, um, I like to use either the end of my pin tool or the end of a wood tool, and then I seal up that edge. I'll put the other side on. Put a little more slip in here. It's drying fast. When I see that slip squishing out, that's how I know it's together. Seal it up there. Seal the inside. And then finally, this one again is looking a little dry. I'm gonna add a little more. Now I'll put this one here. And this one here. Now, once you've got it all put together, you wanna make sure it's square. Usually I'll use the edge of my board to make sure that all my edges are nice and square. And then I'll finish up. Now, some people like to reinforce the corners with a slab, but I can see that there's no gaps in my corners. If you put your corner together and you see that there's a gap of um, space there, I recommend you taking a little piece of clay, rolling a thin coil and just slip and scoring it into that corner just for extra support. Okay, questions so far? Not too difficult, right? As long as your slabs have dried. If you try doing this with soft slabs, it's a whole different story, much more difficult. So if your slabs have dried a little bit, very easy. Okay, now the next part. 
I told you to save your extra clay. So now we're gonna use this to make the bottom first. So I've got plenty here for the top and the bottom. I'm going to put it down. And I'm not gonna cut it out, I'm just gonna trace it. Once I've traced it, flip this over. I'm going to take slip, load it up here. Do the same thing here. What's next, Aaron? Cut it out and put the... Nope. What do I have to do first? Um, score. Score. Once I've applied the slip, then I'll take my fork. Again, bringing the fork, even a plastic one. There's so much scoring in this next unit. I used to have a whole bin of plastic ones. I think they got thrown out. So... If you'd like a fork to score with, bring in your own. Maybe they were stolen. Possibility. And then I'm going to score where I've traced on the slab all the way around. If I'm off by a little bit, I'm not concerned. You'll see why. Then I'm going to just make sure this has plenty on here. Then I'm going to flip it over carefully and then set it right back down where all of those score marks are. Before I press, I'm gonna stand up and make sure my walls are nice and straight, and then I will press it into place. All right, what's next? What is it? Cut it, right? Because this is weird, right? So I'm gonna take my knife or my pin tool first, and I'm just gonna go around and seal those edges. So I'm making sure that the form is sealed to the slab. I do that first on the outside, then I'm gonna use the, ed the back end of that, and then I'm gonna go around the edges on the inside. And once I've done that, I'll grab my fiddling knife, and now I'm gonna very carefully cut off the extra. Now, if I leave a little overhang there, I'm not too concerned because I can shave that off after. Much easier than cutting it out first and then trying to get the perfect fit. And again, if there's any overhang, I just take my rib tool and shave it back. This is also a good opportunity just to make sure that those two pieces are solid together and not gonna come apart. Now, I'm ready for the lid. Now there's two ways we can make the lid. We can make a fitted lid like this, where we create the shape on the inside. And what purpose is this serving? To keep it in place. If that wasn't there, this would just slide off, correct? The other type of lid, we slip and score the top on, so we make a closed form. And then once it drives, we take our knife and we cut all the way around using some sort of wavy line. And then it opens and it fits back into itself. So that's that type of lid. So I'm gonna show you this one because this one I feel is pretty self-explanatory. So now, I'm gonna take my box, put it back down on that extra clay that I have. I'm going to go ahead and cut it out. So I'm just tracing around. You can use a pin tool or a fettling knife, whichever you're more comfortable with. Then I'm going to, can you please put your phone away? Take this out. And now I need to create my little edge. So again, I've got plenty of extra clay here. This is why I told you to roll a big slab. So I'm gonna start with a straight edge. So I'm gonna cut a straight edge with the ruler. Then I'm just gonna take my ruler and I'm gonna mark a quarter inch. And I'm gonna do four marks because I'm gonna want four strips a quarter inch wide. Then 
Once I have my four marks, I'm gonna cut each strip and put it to the side. is plenty. Now, I know this is just over a quarter inch wide. So to give myself a little bit of wiggle room, I'm gonna measure in from each edge about a half an inch. This way I know it's gonna fit. Because if the square isn't far enough in, your lid won't fit on top of your piece. Once I've marked that half inch all the way around, I'm gonna take my ruler and just draw some guidelines. What these lines are gonna tell me is where my interior shape has to go. So now I know it's gotta go in here. I take my strips. I need two long ones. Then I cut on my guides, one, two. And then I need two shorter ones, that one's crooked. So I'll do the same thing, put them on the ends, cut them to fit. Again, if this was soft clay, very difficult, but if you're using slabs that you let set up overnight, much easier. Take out those pieces. And now there's the inside part, nice and clean. Obviously what's next? Slip and score, right? And then we'll pretend I've slip and scored and put that on. Now I could see my lid's a little off right there. I cut it a little crooked. I could just clean that up. Now, everybody's box looks very similar this far, so this is where we start to get creative. Now, the first thing we need to come up with is some sort of lid or um, handle to lift our lid. It can be as simple as you cutting, you know, a loop out and slipping and scoring. You could get a little fancier. you know, and play around with getting something a little more creative. You could take a slab and cut out a shape and then, you know, slip and score that on however you want it to. But you need some way to open and close your form. Um, you can even take a ball of clay and do something like that, but you just don't want anything too heavy because if it's too heavy, what's going to happen? What will happen to the lid? It's going to sink in. It'll sink in. So whatever you want to do, as long as it's not too heavy. You can also add things to the outside. You could stamp words on here. You could paint with underglaze. You can carve. It's still soft enough. If I wanted to stamp something, I could stamp something on the outside. I could stamp something on another piece of clay and then attach that on. So whatever you want to do. But this is where this, you know, basic box gets a lot fancier. Okay, question. So we have about four minutes. What I want you to do 